to another edition of, I guess we're calling it still the Kaju Damia podcast. We got like a thousand goddamn podcasts. <laughs> can bring them back at any time. Right. I'm your host, as always, Chad Porter. Joining me is the glorious one himself, Marcus Green. Marcus, how are you? Going good. Looking forward to this. So we watched the first four episodes of the dub. Apparently there's six of the sub. Only dorks watch the sub, so we ain't worrying about them. <laughs> um, so, yeah, uh, already this is feeling like another My Hero season, so that's always a good thing. We open up with the very first episode. It's All Hands on Deck, Class 1A. These names are always very, just very Japanese Clash! Class A versus Class B. Like, <laughs> what? What about Showdown? It's same thing. Fewer words. Or make it happen, Shinsho. Like, what? I love these dumb names. They're so good. <laughs> so the first episode brings us back. Um, I forgot where the season before left us. Yeah, you know, season before left off with that epic clash between uh, Endeavor and... That's right, uh, and the Nomu. Souped up. Yeah, the souped up uh, no movie called High End. That epic <laughs> conclusion. What a the season. what a great name for a villain. High End. Oh, I love it. <laughs> so Endeavor gets his face kicked in. Hawks has no more feathers, and all the kids are like, "Dude, and uh, Endeavor, he's a uh, he's uh, a pr- pretty pretty badass mother. Shut your mouth. You know I'm talking about Endeavor." <laughs> that was a nice little shout out to the chef friend. How you doing? <laughs> So this episode, if I remember correctly, um, is that uh, they, they do like some type of like training drill, and they use the big three uh, uh, from My Hero as the villains, and it was great because uh, Lamillion was just kind of chilling in the water. I'm a victim. Come <laughs> save me! <laughs> oh no! What if I die? If I drown? And then uh, gonna... Sun Eater was there, and he's like, "I shouldn't have been a villain." Uh, the, the, the anxiety is killing me. Just, just, they're all just potatoes. There's nothing but starches here. <laughs> no villains, only starches. Yeah. Like, what do you want, villain? To go yeah. home. <laughs> <laughs> I love Sun Eater. He's, he's just so he blunt. Has such, he has such performance anxiety. His, his performance anxiety, though, makes it so damn entertaining because, like, he, he he's not, like, rude, but he's bluntly honest he's what do you want to go home <laughs> he's not <laughs> he lying turned around and started walking and everybody went the fuck <laughs> yeah then of course um the chick was the only one who, who actually wanted to participate uh she's she's a daffy one uh this was i guess typical fodder for an opener besides this first season because i think the third season had them doing like like a swim challenge or some bullshit like that. Yeah, they kicked it off at the school with a swim, uh, yeah, a swim off, a little swim meet. That's um, kind of how they do it. Third season, and, uh, and then, yeah, and, and of course, coming off the second season, this when when uh, Deku was obviously still, you know, doing the full, still getting used to the full cowling. Mm-hmm. So him and him and him and uh, Bakugo went at it, of course, in the swim thing. So that was. So uh, a, a a slow intro into the show is not unexpected. It was what it was. Uh, we did get to see some endeavorness, so that's always cool. Endeavorness. There's a little bit of a reverb on your end, Marcus. I don't know why. Um, but as far as the episode goes, I don't think anything pertinent happens until the end, where we find out that Hawks is kind of chilling with Dobby, the villain, not the. House gnome from Harry Potter. <laughs> Dobby gets sock? <laughs> no, Dobby. Um, and it, it seems to be that Hawks and Dobby are having some type of partnership. That's how the episode ends. We know, and we end up finding out what eventually happens with Hawks and Dobby, which we'll get to here in a second. But Marcus, when the episode ended that way, with that huge cliffhanger where, where Hawks and Dobby or Dabby or Dahabi, are meeting up. What was going through your head? Like, did you think that Hawks was actually like a turncoat? 
Yeah, I did. Um, and it kind of made sense um, in a way because obviously going all the way back to what that was season two, mm-hmm. um, we, we learned that, that basically there was a plant in UA. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the stuff trader. That was getting yeah, out. Trader. Yeah, trader that was because stuff that was getting out obviously to the League of Villains. So, you know, that just felt like it was tying in. And then obviously we learned some more extensive uh, stuff to that. But towards the end, I was like, wow, man, all this stuff he talked about, you know, because one of the best parts about that that season four finale was the flashback to when they showed him as a kid. And he talked about how much he looked up to Endeavor. And I'm like, you you set up your <laughs> your hero like that? Yeah, you're like, he literally was going to die. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, there was the potential for that. So I was like, man, this, this is uh, this is jacked up because he's the number two hero. So. So we end up finding out at the start of the second episode of Visages that Dobby actually shows up immediately following the battle with uh, the Nomu. High end. And he begins an attack on Hawks and Endeavor until, um, this is Mirko. I forget who Mirko was. I want to say it was a chick. Am I right about that? It was a chick that showed up. Yeah, yeah. She's like a Lola Bunny on steroids. Oh, that's right. Was she one of the uh, the bunny squad chicks? No, she was no, the, the rabbit hero. That's no, right. No. Yeah, yeah, she was a rabbit hero. She's definitely one of the top uh, top ranked. But yeah, I didn't I didn't expect her. She was a, a, a pleasant surprise. He was going to catch all those hands and feet. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't get out of that. <laughs> like thumper on the ice. Da, 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 da. So. <laughs> We, we find out through a conversation with Hawks and Dobby that uh, Hawks had actually arranged the setup on Endeavor and that uh, the Nomu that Dobby used wasn't, I guess, pre-approved. <laughs> Got kind of kind of <laughs> angry about that. He's like, hey, 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 when I ordered this model, I did not ask for the high-end luxury items. I ain't paying for that shit. <laughs> I don't need navigation in my car. I got a phone for that. But we later... I, ordered, I sent the order propane, you gave me propane and propane accessories. <laughs> I ordered coal and you gave me propane and propane accessories. You're welcome. <laughs> Spe- oh, speaking of Hank of the Hill, so a little, little detour. Um, the actress who plays him is in a show called California Cajun. And I rewatched it because I have Showtime for work because I have to watch Bellator and they're on Showtime. And I was like, all right, I'm paying eight bucks a month or whatever for the stupid service. I might as well get my money's worth. So I'm like, let's see what shows you got. And there's like only like 30, 40 shows. I'm like, whatever. One of them I had to watch before it's Californication starring David Duchovny. There's a lot of boobs in it. Thumbs up. I completely forgot, like, three episodes in, this one lady, uh, one character named Marcy, just starts, like, making voices and sounds and whatnot. I'm like, who, does she, who is she? And then I realized, oh, my God, that's Bobby Hill. <laughs> And there's some times when she hits the Bobby notes. <laughs> but she's saying, like, some really fucked up things. Like, imagine, like, Bobby saying, Ah, come on, Daddy. <laughs> it's so fucked. It messes you know, with your mind. <laughs> it's, it's so weird growing up because you, ne- you never hear those voices uh, and imagine, like, yeah, that could be a woman's voice. Well, that could be a woman behind voice and that character. Like, growing up and to find out that, like, it was a, like a woman, a woman that did it. Well, I, well, we grew up on dub, so we wouldn't actually know. But growing up, finding out there was a woman that did, I guess, the Japanese voice for Goku and stuff like that. Tommy Pickles was a chick. See that exactly right there, and, Tom, uh, Tommy. So I mean that that's cool when you find out because you obviously we grew up. Uh, we have a deep appreciation for the voice acting, but it's it's always crazy, man. It's like. <laughs> Really wish those people get more credit because what they do, like for instance, on the Boondocks, Regina King does the voice for the kids. <laughs> wait, wait, okay. So I, I've never seen the Boondocks, but I'm v- very familiar with the show. How do they get Regina King to do that? Because like, you, with voice actors, you don't get paid as much, which is why you see yeah. voice actors doing like a thousand roles in a month. How do they yeah. afford Regina King? She's fantastic. <laughs> she did both the voices because like, there's two sons and and like a grandfather, right? Yeah, yeah, obviously, uh, the the uh, the late John Witherspoon did the grandfather, and then Regina King did the, the Huey and uh, Riley. 
That's fantastic. She's so talented. She's the only reason I saw Miss Congeniality too. <laughs> oh, man. Full disclosure. She's the reason I see a lot of things, let's be honest. Uh, Regina King. Uh, she ain't bad looking either, man. She ain't bad looking either. And, and anywho, uh, so back to the me hero. So uh, it turns out Hawks isn't actually a villain. He uh, was asked by, I think, the police chief and the head of UA, I think, to infiltrate the League of Assassins. God damn it, Batman. <laughs> <laughs> the League of Villains to try to take him down from within. And because Hawks is too cool for school, he's like, yeah, I can totally pass for being a villain because I'm pretty much a jackass anyway. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so that was pretty cool. The other thing that happened in this episode that I thought was like really interesting was we got to see Endeavor and his kids. Yeah, man. And that was really hard because one of the things I love about like great writing is when you take a villain or or an antagonist or just a jackass and you try to find ways to make him redeemable. And that was kind of what they're trying to do with Endeavor. And they had this big kind of sit down where the, uh, the all three of the kids um, were, were uh, uh, hanging out eating. And then their father returns from the hospital and they're like, you know, the daughter's like, you know, I can make you dinner. And the oldest son's like, fuck this noise. I'm outie. And then uh, just poor Icy Hot's like, I'm going to just sit here and eat my food. <laughs> and it was a really emotional moment. And we got to see some really fantastic voice acting. Because the emotion really came through. And, and the, you know, the kids all had different responses to everything. And basically, it, it was kind of revealed that, you know, Endeavor knows he was a jackass. But he's going to try to prove that he's the father that he thinks he could be or should be or some to that effect. And he doesn't blame his kids for hating him, which, you know, fair enough. You shouldn't. It's your fault. And, and it was a nice kind of character moment for Endeavor. I think it was one of those moments that I think sets the character apart from the rest of the noise. Because, like, think about someone we both like. We both like Ed Shot, right? He's a ninja that folds up like paper. That's dope. But what do we know about him? He, yeah. He delivers pizza sometimes? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, look at it, man. Uh, look how much of the show was centered around All Might. We really don't know that much about him besides that, you know, he, he bleeds a lot. <laughs> and he, you know, he doesn't he have a, a stomach? Yeah, exactly. We I didn't still, really I get too much back. I still don't know how that's possible, Marcus. How is he alive without a stomach? Like, you literally cannot live without a stomach. I just, I don't know how he doesn't spend all his time at the doctor. I don't get it. <laughs> but, um, yeah, we really didn't get to get too much backstory on him till like, the first movie. Yeah, and even you know? then, like, so, we don't know a lot about his, like, we know a lot about his life as a hero. Yeah. But we don't know anything about him before he became All Might. Like, who was he? How you know, like we don't even we don't even entirely know for sure. At least I don't. How he met his uh, his predecessor or his uh, his uh, mentor? Because he basically he was basically Deku. He was quirkless. Yeah. Like how did they meet? Yeah. So it's uh, so it is refreshing to get this full thing with it. And, and then what was really great about the episode is that you know, like you said about the writing, you know. Because even though he almost died in that in that fight with Anomu, so much of that was about his realization and his first steps towards attempting to get redemption in spite of everything that he's done. Mm -hmm. Realizing, you know, what he was and who he is and, you know, how far he still has to go, not only as a hero, but as a dad and, and putting the right foot forward and, and getting that journey. So when he comes home and, you know, obviously the daughter is probably the most positive in terms of you know meeting him where he is you know Shoto's kind of in the middle because obviously he is literally the physical representation of all his effort mm -hmm. and the, the son is like look man you can do all this you know stuff you want to do but I don't forget nothing mom's still jacked up in the home I just found out my freaking brother's favorite sherbet because you you know you treated us like the, the red headed step failures and, and, you know, he was supposed to be the prize thing. Our brother, you royally effed over, which I would assume may have something to do with this whole Dobby thing. Um, 
because he mentioned a brother we don't really know anything about, and I would imagine like that little interaction between Dobby, it feels personal. Um, mm hmm. But obviously, I don't read the manga, so you know I can only speculate. But like I, I, I appreciate the fact that the story didn't let him just get off with that fight of like, oh, I'm gonna do better, and not showing us him attempting to. Mm -hmm. So the son giving him crap and then him like, you know what, you're right, but all I can do is try to do better from here. And even, and even that little exchange between him and Shoto, like Shoto, as soon as he opened the door, Shoto's like, that's a real bad scar, Pop. <laughs> <laughs> Would be a shame if it got infected. <laughs> <laughs> now we match, cuz. <laughs> now we match, homie. So it's like. Usually it's, birthmarks uh, come the other way around, Dad. Exactly, exactly. So it, it was cool, man. Like, he really getting it from all sides. It's like, you know, he was getting the praise from some people, but then other people was like, so he struggled with one of those dummies? <laughs> it's like, he's supposed to be the number one, and he was struggling? So See, he was catching praise and hell at the same time. I'm glad you brought up that, that line about the scar, because when I heard it, it kind of felt like one of two ways. It, it both felt sincere, like, all right, I'm mm. acknowledging that you have been in an injury, like that you have, a, 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 you know, ha, have an injury. I'm acknowledging it, but also, lol, nice scar, dipshit. So like, it kind of felt like it was both yeah. concerned yeah. and sarcastic, because yeah. like Shoto didn't really talk to him much. Yeah, you, you know what's even funny about that? It's funny that he's, and I don't know if this was intentional, but this is obviously, you know, I, I'll be looking like way deep into things. It's funny that he's like half hot and half cold because he really is like the representation of the middle of his sister and his brother. His brother's like, F you. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I don't forget nothing. F you, go to hell. Mm -hmm. The sister's like, no, oh, dad, like, you know, I know what it was, but, you know, you can do better. And Shoto's like, look, I'm not going to let you off the hook for all this crap, but I'm going to give you space to do better at the same time. Sh Shoto is shouting nurse cat. <laughs> <laughs> He both loves and hates his father until he's forced to actually speak. Uh, I agree with the Dobby thing, uh, and here's why. I, I, I don't remember when. I want to say it was in season two. There was a yeah. passing line when they were talking about people who, for lack of a better term, quirk, quirk fuck, where they tried yeah. to have kids w with powers. It was insinuated, at least I took it this way. I may be wrong on the actual implication, but I took it like Endeavor has like 30 fucking kids from different women and that their mother was the, the last of his attempts to get the right kind of kid, if that makes sense. So like, yeah. I've always kind of expected there to be more kids. So if there are, I won't be surprised. I just, you know, like you said the thing about Dobby, he's got fire powers. Like, I don't know, maybe, but he also looks kind of crusty and I don't see any of the other Endeavor kids getting crusty when they do fire power. But then again, only one other kid can do, you know, fire power. So I don't know. I'm expecting Endeavor to have like 60 fucking kids, man. It's gonna be hilarious. I hope one of them is like a disappointment in like the highest order. To like, like it's actually like uh, uh, um, uh, Minetta. <laughs> oh, my most disappointing son. <laughs> like I tried to, I tried to quirk F, and this went totally wrong. <laughs> she had a cherry power, or or was it just her cherry pie endeavor? <laughs> endeavor like Spootang pie. <laughs> So it was a very wholesome moment. And then at the end of the episode, Midoriya has a tweaker moment. <laughs> That's the best way to describe it. He's high on some shit. Uh, he sees, what is there, eight other um, people who, who had one for all before him? Yeah. Yeah, yeah the, uh, the vestiges of the... Uh, of the uh, Former... The lineage of Pop. Yeah. Yeah. I think Rose, there's yeah. seven or eight, and All Might has yet to join the the brig brigade, if you will, uh, of of vestiges. And they come no, to him. He, no, they showed him. He was the one in the yellow, but they showed the younger version of him. Oh, that's right. So he, they're they're all kind of like, yeah. Sup, Midoriya. Midoriya's like, oh my god, I broke the window. How'd I do that? <laughs> and I expected like, all right, I don't know if this actually happened. <laughs> So, like, tell me if it did or not. Was well, fucking naval laser dude outside the door going, like, I'll, I'll keep this secret? Or, or did I just severely hallucinate that scene? No, because I think um, 
when the dream ended, his powers exploded, and mm-hmm. Naval Laser woke up like, what in the twinkling hell was that? Okay, so that did happen. All right. Naval Laser was making some pretty overt creepiness towards Midoriya. All right. Just wanted to make sure that that was a real thing. <laughs> I had just gotten my first of the two shots when I watched the episode. I'm not sure what was a fever dream and what wasn't. Oh, by the way, shout out to you getting vaccinated. But uh, May 18th, I get the second one, and I can be all done with the nonsense. Although I'll still mask up, obviously. But, like, I won't be, like, terrified anymore, so that's cool. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, remember there was a whole episode of that last season. Well, not necessarily an episode, but remember when it was training and... um. Deku was like trying really hard and the naval label dude was like, I relate to you because I understand how hard it is trying to overcome what you view as a flaw, you know, about yourself. Cause it, for him, it's like, dude, I like, I, I basically just got a belly bean that makes me throw up whenever I use it. So I relate to how hard you're striving. And then it got weird cause towards the end of the episode or throughout the episode, he was real creepy. Like, do you want to try some of my cheese? <laughs> <laughs> like it got real weird, and uh, yeah, it was it, it was hilarious. But Ayama is uh, he's an interesting character to say the least. His his hero name is so like what, what's it like the the sparkliest star or something? Yeah, it's uh, don't can't stop twinkling. Oh, that's my his God. whole name. <laughs> what a terrible name. <laughs> We got anime, we got Grape Juice, uh, Shoto, Deku, Bakugo's undecided. Well, Shoto's uh, undecided, too. Although, we don't know if he's ever going to pick one. Yeah. Uh, we obviously got, we got Ingenium. <laughs> like, all the, all right, so let's be, like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this, you can agree or disagree, that's fine. But I think all the hero names for the kids absolutely suck. <laughs> No, I think Class B got him with the names. But I mean, Class A got him with the design because Class B looks like, you know, generic Hero 4. <laughs> oh, look, there's secondary, you know, a uh, 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 walk-on 2. Hey, there's background character 4. Hey, what's up? How you doing? But then you look at the Class 1A and it's like, oh, yeah, these are the dudes that, you know, are the next Superman. But their names are the next Plastic Men. Ugh. And it's funny you say Plastic Man because, you know, Cyril, the tape guy's name is Cellophane. <laughs> oh, my God. All of these names are terrible. All right. Cellophane, so, your gravity. All right. I will say this. I like your gravity because it's kind of dumb. <laughs> the, for some reason, I like the dumbness of her name. Um, What's uh, Kirishima's name? Oh, Red, Red Riot. Yeah, oh, that's that's different. dope. I dig that. Yeah. All right, we're we're, we're going to do this. We, we we need to figure out who has the best names. <laughs> I've always appreciated Deku because he flipped his bully name. Mm-hmm. It's like, no, I'm going to take this. I'm going to throw it in your face. Deku's pretty dope. Um, <clears throat> so we have. Um, I I don't know if this is a spoiler, but we'll go with it. Uh, Bakugo's name will eventually become Dynamite. Is that terrible? Ingenium, uh, all right, so, so we'll, we'll give these a letter gate. Deku, I'll give a C. Deku, I like the idea that he flipped an insult into a name, but it's still dumb. You sound like a walnut. <laughs> you sound like something I put in my salad. That ain't scary, homie. Uh, then we have Bakugo, who goes by Kach- Kachan and Dynamite, uh, but we only know him as Kachan at the moment, but that's not a hero name. It's, it's more Deku's pet name for him, so I'll give it an F. <laughs> pet names aren't scary. It's like Baby Cakes being a hero. Although, leave it to my hero. Probably a character named Baby Cake somewhere. What about you, Marcus? What are you giving the first two? Deku and, and Kachan. Like I said, I can, I can appreciate Deku. Um, even though, did we ever find out what it actually meant from Bakugo? Or he just yeah, about that? I don't... he said it was, some, it was like an insult of some sort, but we don't exactly know what it was. I think it's like a Japanese term that doesn't translate. No, oh, got you. Uh, so Cash Can, I mean, it works because <laughs> Bakugo's personality basically overshadows any name you could give him. Like Dynamite's almost not enough. Yeah, almost should call him Overkill. Okay. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, Uravity, I'm going to give a, a hard B. I'm digging the Uravity. Do, do you like the Ur the Uravity? Yeah. Yeah, because uh, yeah, it, it, cause it, 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 her power isn't just like when you hear about her power, it's like, okay, that... It, li it literally sounds like what it is because it's more complicated than just, uh, you know, she can make people float and whatnot. So, um, yeah, I get at a, I get at a B minus. In Genium, I'm giving a hard A. It sounds like a car I want to buy. <laughs> Did you get the new Ingenium yeah, from Ford? And, and, and it's a pass down family, and it's a fast pass down fan of mantle, which I dig. And he literally looks like one of those older sports cars that would have been in Speed Racer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it, the only thing that's missing is in, Ingenium Mach 5. Full name. Because you know the mufflers on his thing just uh, for aesthetic. They don't do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Shoto's name is Shoto. That's an F. <laughs> <laughs> Marcus, is there any redeeming quality about Shoto? No. I mean, it, it, does that translate to half hot, half cold? <laughs> Icy hot. There it is. I don't think it do because it just the B is probably like the most powerful one in the group. He's so like <clears throat> melancholy. <laughs> That's his name, Collie. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Better yet, Lassie. <laughs> uh, well, then we got Red Riot. I'll give that a B plus. Like I feel like it's pretty rudimentary, but it also gives you a, a, an idea on how bad some of these names actually are. So I'll, I'll give it a Yeah, that is. Yeah, I'm right there with you. Froppy. I'm sorry. Terrible name. C. Yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, couldn't say frog last. I mean, these ain't going to really be no traditional names like we used to, like, you know, Lightning Lad and stuff like that because it's anime because it's Japanese. It kind of has to be the lame or over the top. So. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, there's an entire best-selling um, uh, anime and manga series where all the characters are named after fucking vegetables. So, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, then we have Yaya Rosa. Yaya Rosa. Momo. Creedy. <laughs> Creedy. What, what kind of name is that? No, F. <laughs> yeah, it's supposed to be, I guess, Creedy because of what she can do. Listen, you got uh, size I mean, F boobs, you look like that, you got power like that, and your name is that? Like, no. Nah. That's A-A-A-F. <laughs> yeah, hilarious. If you could break it down, like, oh, say she can create, and most of the stuff she creates come from a titty. Create titties. <laughs> <laughs> now, that would have been a great name, create titties. <laughs> uh, then we have grape juice. That's enough. Although, technically, he's like a Z character anyway. It's like, that's an improvement still. Yeah, and it also kind of works to his perfectness. Like, yeah, man, it's going to get you some of this great juice. <laughs> and I love the fact that the person who plays him, the English character, is like kind of gorgeous on her own, right? So, like, hey, I'm cool with a female perv. <laughs> uh, then we have um, Kaminari. He's, he's got a solid one, Charge Bolt. Rudimentary, but yeah. fine. Yeah, also I'm pretty I'm pretty sure that's the name of a Pokemon move, but it works. <laughs> I think you're right. I had to go back to my red and blue days. <laughs> I'd give it a B plus. Yeah, yeah, it works. Um then we have uh a hero. Um she's got the uh the, the earphone ears. Uh her yeah. nickname is Earphone Jack, and there there's potential there. If you would have gone with Phone Jack or 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 Ear jack, earphone jack, C plus. It's, it's not great, but but it's pretty spot on. Yeah, yeah. Some people, some people in the show are seen literally like just taking on the name of their quirks. Mm hmm. So yeah, that works. Uh, then of course we have Tokoyami, whose name is Sukoyami. I pronounced that right. Uh, I think Dark yeah. Sh technically his thing is called Dark Shadow, which would have been a better name for him as a hero. And and how do we know that his his thing is called Dark Shadow? Like, did it tell him when he was a child? Is it a passed down quirk? Like, I don't know. I got questions. You know, considering considering the preview we got for episode uh, five, 
that would be a cool way to kind of flash back to him as a kid. Because, I mean, mm-hmm. I would imagine, like, that's his quirk. So, like, how long has he had that? Did it start off as, like, something he was scared of? That'll be an intriguing little backstory episode. Uh, then we have Mini Ashido. She is, of course, the bug-eyed lady yes. girl. And she goes by Pinky. I'll give that a B minus. I ain't hating it. Mostly whenever I hear her name, I just go, Narf. <laughs> so, like, you know, that's a win. As far as I'm concerned, that's a win. Yeah, man. I mean, she, you know, she's uh she works, but she's limp. I mean, you know, her acid thing, you know. Um, it's only so much, but I think the, the beauty of it that, that we're seeing in this arc, we'll get to this next episode in a bit, is that we're seeing a lot of these like B C, maybe even D characters you know, kind of elevating because mm-hmm. of how they're using their powers and how they've developed. Like, she used to just, she used to be, like, do random acid, but she couldn't really, like, aim it. And then she, you know, did the thing with her closed hands, and now she can do all kinds of stuff with it. So, yeah, but Pinky, Pinky works. I mean, she kind of looks like a little, like a little furry, almost. <laughs> <laughs> then, of course, we have the inspiration of this little game of ours. Yoga Ayoyama. Can't stop twinkling. You can. You can if you want. <laughs> Don't sell yourself short, F. Your family must love you on the 4th of July. Right. Only on the <laughs> Then we got Soji Tentacle. I, I think Tentacle is my favorite looking hero of the group. He's got, like, you know, all those weird extra arms, and, like, he can turn them into, like, like uh, I don't know if I've ever seen him fly, but, like, you think he can. Cause like he does like his, his yeah. arms are connected, and like he's got the like the ninja mask on. He's got the the really sharp hairline. Like I think he looks cool as shit. No, he look, no he looks cool, man. Um, I'd give his and then you know also he can, like he got all these arms and he can put like body parts on the end of them so he can, you know, have an eyeball on this hand, an ear on that hand, on on that arm and stuff like that. So you know, obviously. It, it, it works later when you find out the team they have him on. Mm-hmm. Then, of course, we have Hunter Shiro. <clears throat> I think I pronounced that wrong. He's cellophane. He shoots stuff from his elbows. Creepy. F power, F name. Yeah. It, almost like Cero better than cellophane. Like, he looks like he made the outfit of, of, of a tape dispenser look mildly cool, but then now I'm asking myself, okay, is he just... Is that regular tape, or is it? Has he found a way to make it more tapey than regular tape? <laughs> what's yeah? What, what's his super advanced move? Like he can't. Is it just him getting stickier? In which case, him and grape juice have the same extra power. Because because in my mind, like I remember, you know, also one of my favorite cartoons going up was the '90s animated Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. I remember like he used to have to get out of a jam. He's falling. And then he was like, okay, here goes nothing. I never tried this before. Then he shoot his webs up together and he create like a parachute on webs. I'm like, I'm wondering like, can he do that with his tape? Because if you're just shooting tape, like it's tape. I'm like, you must catch hell against flame heroes. <laughs> or water heroes because it's, it's tape. Uh, or, or any villains that are made out of metal. It won't <laughs> stick. <laughs> it's kind of the point. Then we have Mashahiro Ojiro. He's Tail Man. Maybe the most apropos. I'll give his name a B just because it's the most spot on. He's literally a tail and he's a man. And even the even the animator that, that was like going through the quirks, he was like, such uh, such and such such and such. Quirk, tail. Is it a quirk? Yeah, it's a tail. And then but but also it's like Besides the tail, like he's like proficient in martial arts, which is why he wears a gi. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I, I dig him. I dig him a lot. So yeah, that that uh, yeah, I like him. I do too. He's he's very much if uh, if uh, the the real Karate Kid, not Daniel Russo. No, no, talk, ch- talking Johnny Lawrence. If Johnny Lawrence had a tail, that's how I see it. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, by the way, shout out to them. I think they just uh, because the guy Zapka. Um, tweeted out that they finished filming the, the uh, what they did, season four? Mm-hmm. They and it's, finished, so that's... that's it's coming soon. Oh, yeah, no, oh, no, it's not coming that soon. I'm thinking of a different show. Uh, Castlevania is coming soon. Yeah, man. I think it's coming at the end of the month. 
Castlevania, man, is, is touted as probably, I have heard somebody call it like the best video game adaptation they've seen. You know, Castlevania's, man, has been, been chugging along. Well, besides the Super Mario Brothers movie from the early 90s, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> right. I just love that they had one job, find two Italians to play plumbers, and they failed. <laughs> Bob Hoskins is British. John Leguizamo, if I remember correctly, is Puerto Rican. How did you, you fuck see, that up? And then you see the rest of the movie, and you're like, you know what? Those were the least of their problems. Right? I do not want Swain Goombas. No. Jesus Christ. I don't even want a Mario Brothers movie. movie. Fuck. The movie is like the best type of abomination. <laughs> then you get like, okay, it's 2021. They got to get better with these adaptations. Then here come Mortal Kombat. You're like, you know what? I love Johnny Tsunami. <laughs> <Back in laughs> 95. Shang Tsung was everything. That 95 movie is getting so much respect now. I take it. I haven't seen the new one yet. I'm taking it. It wasn't very good. It just, it got Wonder Woman 84 logic when it comes to the world. Uh, that's disappointing. But expect it. When, when I saw that they were doing like, oh, he's a brand new hero made for, the, I'm like, oh, never mind. This is going to suck. <laughs> <laughs> like, it doesn't matter what else you did like i was already out all right final three we have anima by koji koda we have rikido sato who's the sugar man who maybe has the least amount of lions so far in the series of of the main class 1a heroes and then we have invisible girl in order c f actually c d a so yeah. so with that said, Marcus, there was something I wanted to ask you, and I completely forgot. Now I remember. So we've seen the first three uh, seasons of Castlevania. At least I know I have. Have you? No. Okay. I would recommend watching that. If you like the first season, I think it's only like six episodes, finish watching the series, and maybe we'll do a Castlevania core or something okay. for, for the series finale. Because season four is the last season. And then they're going to do a, sp- a spin-off franchise uh, into a different portion of the franchise history. Because Castlevania, the series on, on Netflix, is technically based around the third game. And there's like 30 games. So like there's a lot of lore to pull from. Yeah. So we'll see about that. All right. Anyway, let's get back to the, to the damn thing. So we find out in the next episode... They're going to do a, a, a combat. It's A plus B equals C. I know my calculus. It says you plus me equals us. The only <laughs> good thing MTV has ever done. Right there, together. With a two numeral together. I digress. So we get, uh, we get Mid- Midoriya talking to All Might in this episode, and he's all like, hey, I've been seeing some ghost shit, and, and All Might's like, well, that's concerning. And he's like, what do you mean concerning? He's like, no, 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 concerning, concerning. Just like, I don't know, I think you're going to die concerning? And, and Midoriya's like, the fuck? <laughs> it wasn't exactly that way. At least that's how it went in my head. But basically, uh, th- there's a... a sh- I think it's this episode. We see uh, One for All's brother. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, is, isn't he the progenitor? Isn't he the OG uh, uh, person who held this quirk? Yeah, because um, it's, it's funny how that whole situation came up because we get a young version of uh, All for One, and it's still they still bring that creepy music, which I love. But um, he basically gave his brother a quirk, which uh, turned into one fall. Mm-hmm. So it's 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 weird how that whole thing came out to me. So we then get to see that class one B and class one A they're gonna do the throwdown, but wait, there's more. Our favorite, uh, our favorite little uh, uh, dork who who can control people's minds. He's gonna be involved, and and he's trying to vie for a spot in one of the classes. But the problem is, <clears throat> if Shinzo gets a, cl- a spot in the class, he's going to have to take someone's spot. That was always the, uh, the, the kind of point of emphasis, is that he couldn't enter unless somebody left or was removed. So 
Mm. I think someone from Class B might be in trouble. So the first part of this, uh, we're actually going to be in this for a while. <clears throat> um, there's at least, because like the, the, we're looking at Episode 7, which is three episodes away, if you're on the dub. And it, it says match three. So like they're, they're going to be doing like a whole arc with this AVB. That's, that's your, your class A versus class B. But if you're doing it Zack Snyder style, AVB. <clears throat> Turns out Shinzo, trying to get his way into one of these classes, has a new modifier for his power where he can mimic voices. That seems unfair. And he also has our favorite uh, teacher, uh, what's his name, Night Eyes? I can't be right. Oh, yeah, you're talking about um, Aizawa. Aizawa, um, yeah. Yeah. Is it Night Eyes? Night Eye? I think it's Night Eye. Aizawa gave him his scarf. He's like, use the scarf. It's super fucking talented. He's like, all right, cool. So <clears throat> they end up getting placed on, I think it's what, five teams of four or four teams of four? And um, Shinzo is going to be on one class A team and one class B team to even it out. And it's going to be a four on four free for all for most of the uh, encounters. Um, winners get the right to call themselves class A, I guess. I don't know. It seems kind of dumb. <laughs> but whatever. Here we are. We get a great fucking episode. Like, cause episode three, I don't think was much beyond filler. Episode four, on the other hand, was, was the true meat and potatoes of what episode three set up, which was the fight between the two groups. Now, I don't remember their names. I'm not going to sit here and try to lie to you and pretend that I do. A lot of names confuse the fuck out of me, especially when they're all Japanese. So I'm doing my best. <laughs> I'm doing my fucking best. But basically, Shinzo leads Class A into a brilliant battle plan against Class B, and it's one of the best fight scenes they've done in this show. And I know we say that like every year. It's the best. But I loved it mostly because of the ending. Because the way Froppy dropped both them dudes at the same time was fantastic. And I loved the way I think it was Aizawa went through the game plan of like like the post, you know, post game strategy, like, hey, this is what happened, this is what they did. I thought that was cool as shit. Like I, I yeah, dug that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean the MVPs are basically um, Froppy and, and uh, Shinzo mm -hmm. um, because really the focus got put so much on him by the other team because like look we, we got to take him out because he basically can brainwash people and then you add on to the fact that now he has this voice modulator where it can change the tone and uh, I guess the, the frequency of his voice or whatever so now he can sound like other people um, and it works so well with the Beast guy because he got heightened senses, heightened hearing, which worked against him when it came to uh, obviously Asui, because that they really it was a two part thing. Obviously the the voice, and then the fact that she covered them in her acidic acid, which confused his sense of smell. Because mm -hmm. uh, they really had the game locked down with the hair chick on class on class one B, because um, she was basically the catcher. They threw him to her, and then obviously she imprisoned him. But the whole situation of, like, we just got to break up their communication. Because it was like, and like you said, it was a brilliant fight. And I'm just thinking they almost needed a, um, like, if we was on a team, it was like, okay, we're going against this dude who basically can mimic our voices and control us. So anything from our team needs to be, such and such, Chad. What's your job? And if you don't hear, what's your job? It ain't one of us. <laughs> like, like, Chad, that way. That's my purse. Just... Marcus, I, I see him. I don't know you. <laughs> like, that's the only way. Like, everything is click, click, Lenore. Click, click, Lenore this. Click, click, Lenore that. If you don't hear Lenore, it's the other thing. Marcus, so, man, 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 go over the man, 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 but he was like, yeah, I'm going to bring this pipe down on his head. Like, nope, that don't work. Because 
because he got shocked by Charles Bow and everything. Like, dude was a real beast. So when you hear, because they did this great thing, like he's about to he's about to squash Enzo, and all you hear is, Doc, look out, down, down, Apocalypse. He was like, shut up. Wait a minute, Apocalypse. Because <laughs> <laughs> that was the only way he knew, but by then it was too late. It was it was phenomenal. It it, it, it was strategy with a little bit of luck mm-hmm. in there. It was it was it was some great stuff. So if they can do all the battles like this, this is gonna be this is gonna be a real sick off. I think it was um, Midori. Now that I think about it, who who like was explaining like the reason why it was so effective is because he made a Pac Beast and Vine, and whoever the the ninja do with the hubcaps. I think his name was Scales. Like the the reason yeah. why it worked was because it, it wasn't the threat or the ability of Shinto to use his voice. It was the threat of it, and that alone broke down their communications and made them unable to communicate. Nah. And it wasn't even the, any nah. use of any quirks. It was the fear of it. And I was like, oh, that's such a cool way of breaking it down. Oh, the, that's a match striker breakdown. It was, yeah, exactly. It was over paranoid. That's what got that's what got Beast, and then shout out to Froppy. She drop kicked the hell out of the Dragon Scale dude, which I actually liked that guy. He looked cool. I liked his powers. But they, I mean, they, they stood for nothing because it's basically like... Uh, like dragon scale bullet seed. Um anybody familiar with the Pokemon games. But uh yeah, it was it was some great stuff. And even the little thing about I thought it was gonna work and then they caught that at the last minute. So that was that was cool because that's the whole thing with him too. So yeah, this was again taking these characters who you'd be like, these guys are like the sidekicks to like Bakugo and Midori and stuff like that. They they kind of come off as C characters at times, and now they came off like a real A squad because of the strategy. Mm-hmm. And I think that's one of the reasons why they're doing this arc is to kind of showcase who these characters are and what they can do. Yeah. So <clears throat> hopefully it kind of raises the profile of not just Class A but Class B. We'll see. That made sense in my head when I said it, but but now it kind of doesn't. <laughs> All right, um, that's about it for all we got for this week's episode. We'll be back in about a month to cover uh, the next four, or maybe we'll do the next one. I don't know how we're doing this. Um, so, yeah, just, just kind of s- stand by on that. Mark, is there anything else you've been watching or doing that you want to talk about before we head off? Uh, no, man, I mean, I think I had recommended this to you. I mean, I, I think, yeah, you gave me Castlevania, and I think I had brought it up to you about uh, catching Invincible because uh, – uh, you know they had a hell of a finale. I think I think you dig it. Um, like the main guy, Omni Man, is voiced by uh, uh, J.K. Simmons, A.K.A. G. Y. M. Gordon. G. Y. M. Gordon. G. Y. M. Gordon. Gordon man. But like the best way I can, like I say, what's the perfect way I can explain uh, describe this to Chad to make him intrigued? Like I think it's uh, it's the perfect. Like, it's like the love child between Sky High and the Boys. Yeah, I, I am familiar with the comic to a degree, so I know about it. Like The name is so generic, though, that I always forget what it is. I am yeah. interested in it because the guy who did it did the Walking Dead comics. Yeah. Kirkman. So I'll check it out. And I think um, the guy who played Glenn on the Walking Dead show is doing the voice of Invincible, I think. I know he was the voice of one of the Ultron characters. Voltron characters, God damn it. Stephen Young, yeah. I think his name is Stephen Young. Yeah. yeah, that's the main character for, or main actor for the sh- for the show, I believe. So I'll check it out eventually. I'll get to it. It's it's not going to be like uh, season fucking whatever we're on now of Flash, where I'm just I'm done. I checked out. I'm good. <laughs> well, but they don't say we will be checking out the season two of Star Girl. Yes, we will. Whenever that starts, I'm in. Courtney Whitmore, you have stolen my heart, and I do not need it back. It's yours. You may have. Yes, you've gotten over your daddy issues in the worst possible way. Only for Starman to come back at the end. Oof. Oh, I, when does that show come back? Because I, I need more of that show. I want to say it's coming back. Did they say it's coming back in... Uh... Let's see, Stargirl season two. Because you know our boy is going to be on there too. Ironic for talking about the Flash. Um, Jay Garrick is going to pass through. Oh, really? Wait, wait, wait. Like, um, who'd they cast to play? John Wish. No, it's going to be John Wish to shift from the Flash, Jay Garrick. Oh, nice. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, uh, it's coming back August 10th. 
Boo. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> oh, Make... wow. I didn't see. Oh, damn. Kung Fu. Yeah, shout out to Kung Fu, which I'm, I'm speaking of shows I've been watching. Kung Fu from the CW is really good. And apparently Stargirl got renewed for season three. I did hear Kung that Fu that was a season three. Yeah, I, I heard that was yeah. a possibility. I also heard it maybe the last season. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah, so w- w- uh, hopefully it's not, unless season two sucks, in which case you can kill it. <laughs> I am no longer going to be on the board of maybe it'll get bo- uh, better. No, you get one bad season and I'm out. Sorry. All I know is, man. All I know is this slow burn they doing on this Green Lantern show. <laughs> So I saw they they cast Guy Gardner. Yeah. I don't know who he is. You dye his hair red? I can buy him as Guy Gardner. <laughs> Cause he looks like a he Marcus, what would you describe Guy Gardner needing as a physical feature in order to cast him? Yeah, like you said, the red hair and he, he got to have this man, I'm, I'm trying to see like I'm almost trying to picture the guy that plays Homelander as him because he just has this smug, this built-in smug asshole face a little bit. <laughs> That's what I was going for. I was going with punchable face, but this is Jeopardy. Yeah. We have some pretty wide rules. I'll give it to you. Yeah. This dude that, who got cast to play Guy Gardner, very punchable face. If you're casting for Guy Gardner, you need a punchable face. Yeah, man. So I'm, I'm digging that. God, just don't cast Tyrese as fucking Jon Stewart. Don't do it. <laughs> you want to see me give up on the show fast? Do that. I promise you. I'm out. I don't need Tyrese. I don't need Ludacris. I don't need one of those dumb fucking wannabe actors doing the role. No, thank you. Oh, my God. Like, you know, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just coming behind on the show because if that ever happens, it's going to be a rant show. The chat's just gonna pull it random like, look, I know they're gonna do this, but we need to go on air now. <laughs> and this chat's gonna be venting. Off. I'm just gonna be in the back going, I promise it has nothing to do with race. Specifically, Tyrese. It goes all the way back to Baby Boy. It, it has everything to do with Baby Boy. boy. <laughs> the movie like, sucks. Like, it's not as much of a cult classic as we thought it was. You'd have to be in a cult to think it's a classic. (laughs) Drink the fucking (laughs) Kool-Aid. I don't even remember how I watched that movie for the first time. I think it was because of a girl. Or maybe my brother. I don't know. Oh, man. I just remember watching it going... So I just read about suicide down the middle. Okay. <laughs> oh man, all I can just think, keep thinking about is like he really started an entire beef with the Rock, and that could just be the closest thing you can look at Hollywood in the last ten years as like the dog barking at the moon. <laughs> <laughs> you <laughs> like <laughs> get, I, so I don't know if you watch a lot of American Dad. <clears throat> There's an episode where Steve is trying to become cool. So Roger gives him a bunch of ideas on how to become a cool guy. And one of them was to pick a fight with somebody. So Steve picks uh, a girl named Esme, I think, who's like 11 and a a sophomore in high school. Like, she's like real fucking smart. So he walks up to her, and he fucking cold clocks her. And Roger's like, when I said you needed to be a tough guy and to pick a fight at someone at school, I didn't mean the girl. (laughs) I feel like that's fucking, uh, 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 um, um, uh, God damn it, uh, Tyrese picking a fight with a rock. Like, he, the eleven-year-old girl was like everyone's favorite person in school. The Rock is everyone's favorite person in Hollywood. Pick a fight with anyone else, because you ain't gonna win going up against The Rock, who spells his name J Y M, C K. <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm st- like, yeah, Tyrese. <clears throat> but the biggest miscasting in Hollywood history that to this day drives me up a fucking wall. Can you guess? Take a shot in the dark. Is it Clooney? No, like, I got why Clooney was picked. He's an A-lister, you know, whatever. Like, he's just very, bl- he's oatmeal. Like, whatever. Like, all right, you're oatmeal. You're fine. It's Shaq. It's Steel. 
I don't know why I didn't immediately go there. I, I, I think I took on your hatred for it and just blocked it out of it completely. <laughs> uh, oh, like, like I, I still long like this a show steal would be such a great idea. You know, you're trying to reach a, 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 what's that? Oh, a live action. I think a live action because it covers so many different things. Like you got like an ex Marine military specialist, dude, you know, he, he grew up in, in a bad part of Metropolis, you know, gang violence and police brutality and, and, and all kinds of other, you know, social issues were ingrained in the character's creation. So why not? Like, there's an, there's an episode of a show called The Newsroom, which I highly recommend watching if you've ever seen it. Terry Crews is on it in season one as a guest star. He plays the main character's bodyguard because the main character's getting death threats. And they're driving from one location to another through New York, which, if you've ever been in New York, if you're a listener at home, uh, is, is pretty much the worst city in the fucking world. Like, if you're walking someplace, you'll get there faster than if you're driving. And they're driving, and there's a traffic jam, so the main character who played by, um, uh, he was the other guy in, in, in uh, Dumb and Dumber. I forget his name. Jeff Bridges? That's not right. He's not not uh, Jim Carrey, but the other one in Dumb and Dumber. <laughs> That's the best way I can do yeah, it. For, for those uh, who, of us who love speed like myself, he's Harry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's in, uh, he's in speed, and he dies, and, and he makes me cry because I loved him. Well, so Terry Crews is his bodyguard. Terry Crews is 6'4", black, and, and built like a linebacker. Will McAvoy, the main character, goes sprinting away, and Terry Crews is like, McAvoy, get back here! I'll kill you! Because he's assigned to protect him, and now he's pissed because the dude's running off. Oh, by the by, the main character's high off his ass. So Terry Crews, is in a, he's having a bad day. <laughs> and uh, two cops see Terry Crews, and they're like, Sir, please calm down. And Terry Crews has the line of the sentry. He goes, Sir... I'm big and black. Ain't nothing I can do about that. <laughs> so, like, that's how I imagine Steel is, like, just a dude who's like, yeah, I know I'm big. I know I'm black. What do you want me to do? <laughs> I can't do much about the, that. This is the worst conversation I have, specifically talking about Ted Cruz, because he's literally starring in a movie where he played John Henry. Oh, did he? Don't. Don't watch. It. Don't don't tell me it's that Adam Sandler movie. No, it's this. No, the Adam Sandler would have been an improvement. <laughs> Who was in it? Because John Henry is one of my favorite folklore heroes. This movie might actually make you not a fan anymore. Uh, <laughs> you you can look it up. I don't want you to watch it because I. I you're my friend. <laughs> it was not good. It was, it was not. It just. It, it just wasn't good. I don't. I didn't get the point. Like I don't know if it was like loosely based off John Henry or like something they was trying to do a real crowd. Like it was really bad. And it's really gonna. This is really gonna deter you from it. You said you didn't want them to cast. Tyrese or Ludacris is Green Lantern. Ludacris is the villain in the movie. Oh, my God. <laughs> I do like the way we think. I'm your friend. I don't want to watch. I don't want to make you watch this movie. Marcus. Hey, it's terrible. I suffered. Like, you need to suffer. Chad. <laughs> it was like, it's like the sequel to Shawshank. I would never do that to Andy because he's my friend. <laughs> That's a that's a solid Morgan Freeman. I think if you work on it, you can hit it. Yeah, thank you. And it, and it, and it equally works because I'm I'm black and you guys. So I would never do that to Andy. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So I guess oh, we're going man. to Siwat and Neho then. <laughs> oh, when, when this whole thing collapses, we're going to Siwat. And... I thought it was either going to be that we were going to go to to uh, um um fuck what is it called in Doug? Not Bloatsburg. That's the rival. Bluffington. I thought we were either going to live in Bluffington together, or I guess we're moving to Siwatneho. Because we are the real-life version of Doug and Skeeter. <laughs> These vaccines don't work out like people think it is. We might not have a choice. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, while I would love to live in Bluffington, I just like saying Siwatneho. So like, I guess we're moving to Mexico. Siwatneho. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I looked it up. It looks terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure there's a trailer. That'll tell you everything. 
I like that is I like that Ludacris's name is Hell. So that's a thing. <clears throat> and, I, and I looked it up. Apparently, John Henry dies at the end, so that's that. I guess makes sense. <laughs> I don't know how he dies. Technically, John Henry died. You know, defeating a a, a um, railroad spike machine. I don't know. I think oh, well. beating someone to death is less entertaining than that. I'd rather actually see a 90 minute film of a dude playing John Henry laying down railroad spikes the entire time. Yeah. I mean, the the, la- the last thing we got from him in terms of the DC universe, specifically the animators, when they uh, put him in Reign of the Superman, obviously, you know, because that's, you know, a part of the lore mm-hmm. in terms of, uh, you know, with the books. But, I mean, he was really cool in that cool suit. The hammer was sick. And I think that'll be, I mean, hell, with the, what they're doing with Stargirl, I think you could easily uh, bring something like John here in the lab. I think you would obviously have to keep it grounded. Something you could definitely do because the way they got that staff in that show, you could easily do with like a hammer. Well, I don't even think you need to go that route. They already established that big giant mech suits work. <laughs> yeah. Like you could just exactly. do something like that. Yeah. I mean, he is the Black Iron Man. <laughs> Sorry, Rhodes. Sorry. Oh, I was about to say that. <laughs> I'll get you, Paul. I said, Sorry, Rhodes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, speaking of which, uh, did you like uh, Captain America? And the... Nope, wrong movie. Uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Wait, what's it called? Yeah, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Yeah, yeah, I dug it. I, I liked it a lot. It was, uh, it was cool. It was, a, it was a nice little follow from Wandavision. More grounded, you know, more streamlined. Didn't have so many people trying to guess what was happening. Apparently, a lot of people uh, did not necessarily like um, the. The new John Wyatt character, uh, the guy who, that that would play, eventually play. Um, U.S. Agent. Yeah, U.S. Agent Ryan Russell. Apparently, I don't know if people obviously is trying to attack him online, but he doesn't have social media. Apparently, people also wrote in. Like, these people are nuts. Yeah. You know? Just what? Watch the entire show. Like I, I haven't seen it. I'm not gonna see it. He's the villain. <laughs> It's like, dude, it's like it's, it's like if he, if you feeling this way about him, he's doing his damn job. Like, mm-hmm. like imagine people like, oh my god, that guy that played Prometheus, we hate him. We need to get him off the show. Like, like what? No, we need a spinoff show. <laughs> exactly. I just want him and Slade going at it for an entire season. Oh my god, that would be amazing. <laughs> whatever, whatever I did to you, I'm sorry. I believe you, Oliver. I just don't care. <laughs> what best line ever? Oh man! Like we 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 rep the Smallville, but I've never heard a line in Smallville delivered with so much poignancy as I did when when Oliver and Prometheus were were exchanging that line of dialogue. Those two had such great chemistry. It's no wonder they're good friends in real life. Yeah, it's no wonder. You and I would have an Oscar between the two of us. Granted, he'd be green and lives in a trash can, but still, great chemistry. <laughs> we need to take over Sesame Street. I think we'd be fucking entertaining. Today's oh, word is God. fuck. As in, <laughs> Marcus just stabbed me in my fucking foot. <laughs> you see me, like, hopping up and uh, down. Elmo, stab a uh, bitch. Oh, uh, freaking uh, article gets released, like, uh, Sesame Street gets, uh... Move to adult swim. <laughs> <laughs> All of a sudden, you're like this. Season two, we got uh, Space Ghost Coast to Coast Muppets. Okay. Okay. No, you've gone too far because I can only get so aroused. <laughs> <laughs> Space Ghost Coast to Coast with Muppets? What? Oh, man. I just want to see Zorak interacting with Elmo. Like, can I get that once? You know Space Ghost is going to kill Snuffle Love against the minute he finds out he thinks he's invisible. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, are you telling me you have an invisible friend? Yeah, he's Snuffle Love, I guess. Where? He's right next to me. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I got to work on my Zorak voice. We got to bring this property to life. Because I want Zorak and Elmo to get into, like, a cannibalistic food fight. <laughs> Oh, uh, then you got counter back. One, two, three murders. Ah, ah. <laughs> <You got it. laughs> Fucking Maltard's like, Space Ghost, there's a, 
creepy Romanian in my control booth. One switch, ah, ah, ah. two switches. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> this needs to be a thing. This needs to be a fucking thing. I don't care if different properties are owned. They need to be a fucking thing. Actually, I don't know. Because technically, HBO has the solicit not solicitation, but the distribution rights to Sesame Street. So maybe it could be hot possible. It is so weird. It's, it is. So we're hearing that now because I feel like maybe the only thing that didn't get put in that new Space Jam trailer. Jeez. Okay, so so let's bring that up real fast. That looked awful. At least I think it did. No, it was it was it was bad. It was it was horrendous. Again, all these remakes are doing nothing but making the the you know the the stuff from the nine just look classic. Like all that fan forstic did was make those other movies look real, <laughs> real commendable. To be fair, even before Fan Forstick happened, I liked the first one. Oh, yeah. Same here. That was also the first movie I remember seeing Carrie Washington in. I don't know if I saw her first in Psych or in that, but I'll tell you what. I loved her the minute I saw her. Yeah. What were you going to say? I'm the most gorgeous blind woman I've ever seen. Oh, my goodness. Uh, She she is Carrie, Carrie Washington. But yeah, and I forgot who was the actor in the second one that played uh, the the surfer. But I liked him in the in the second because I've always because I loved the cartoon when I was younger. Lawrence that Fishburne did the voice. <laughs> no, no, I'm serious. In in the sequel, Lawrence Fishburne did the voice of the Silver Surfer. Oh, the voice. Okay, okay. I yeah, I, but I the, don't I, know who did the physical though. I want to say Doug Jones. I feel like just like uh, stuff like that always goes to Doug Jones. But uh. I don't think that was Doug Jones. <laughs> Wait a minute, was it Doug Jones? Yes, it was. <laughs> <laughs> it was fucking Doug Jones. Yeah, that's fucking crazy. Uh, oh man, but yeah, I, I, I like uh, what, what Lawrence did with that. Everything that you know is at an end. Like all that, like that Alma is talking. That was uh, real cool. So and then, obviously, uh, my boy from Nip Tuck played uh, Victor Von Doom in both mm-hmm. those roles. So that was that was good, but. Yeah, that Space Jam trailer was horrendous. And it was like, people praise it. People talking about all this CGI and like nobody's talking about <laughs> the CGI LeBron's hairline. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I still think he got into that soul glow. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, but it was, it, it was bad. And apparently they took out Le Pew. Yeah. Uh, That's dumb. He's just a romantic. Little Pew, apparently Lola Bunny was too sexy, so that got dialed down. And yeah, to be fair, I'm pl- I blame Lola Bunny for a lot of the uh, um, uh, fur plays. What or, 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 or are those called? Fur, fur something or others? Furries. I blame yeah, that. On, I blame that on Lola Bunny. <clears throat> I blame that all on Lola Bunny. <laughs> Not saying that the character wasn't funny. Just saying, like, honest to goodness. How did Silver Surfer, the Rise of Silver Surfer, turn out so bad? Because, like, I remember, like, the first half of it being great. But then you had the fucking f- cloud of crap. <laughs> that That's what really... And they, and they still found a way to outdo Galactus with Paradox. Or with, with uh, Parallax. Yeah. Uh, it was, it, I wouldn't even say outdo. Like, they lifted Galactus. Like, ah, Galactus <laughs> worked in this one. We're just going to reuse him. Jesus Christ. And like, it, the fucking uh, parallax. God, I was going to, to call him parallaxes. <laughs> parallax <laughs> worked a lot better, at more of a, as a concept. Like having Sinestro turn into a yellow lantern through his own fear would have been so much more efficient than just having dumb fart cloud. He he, at least that has to go in like top ten of best castings and worst movies. I would honestly say that the casting of the Green Lantern movie may have been spot on all throughout. Like, every character made sense. The only one I would say didn't was Blake Lively. I just remember that scene where she's yelling at Ryan Reynolds and how just monotone and, like, how they're a hundred million dollar planes. Do not mess this up. (laughs) Like... (laughs) <laughs> what are you doing? Blake, you're better than this. I know you are. You're a fantastic actor. What are you doing? So, I don't know. All right, that's it. We're done. 
We'll be back. We're, we, you and I are going to come back tomorrow. Twitch.tv backslash wrestling underground. We'll be back tomorrow night. We're going to be talking wrestling and wrestling accessories. <laughs> Bobby, do you know how to start a man's heart with a down power line? Well, there's no wrong way to do it. <laughs> Which is the most honest fucking piece of advice ever. I can't wait for this fucking revival to happen if it does happen. Ugh. It, it's all last about wrestling and wrestling accessories because I feel like we brought up the Corano thing before the Mickey thing happened. Yep. Yeah, I mean, we did. We, we've talked about how just trash Mark Corano is. He's just the worst. So we'll talk about him. We'll talk about fucking what else we got going on. We got uh, New Japan. No, not uh, New Japan. Uh, CMLL and Ring of Honor ending their relationship, possibly setting up for a CMLL and AEW partnership. We got, um, <clears throat> let's see, we got a new champion in New Japan. We got a few new champions. We got the rise of the Never Open with title. We can talk about that. Because apparently Jay White's champion now. And, and I, I don't know why they gave him the Never Open with title, but, I mean, hey, they're at least trying to lift the prestige of the belt, so that's something. I mean, granted, they gave it to uh, Tanahashi first, so that should tell you anything and everything you need to know. Uh, Impact's doing some banger stuff. <clears throat> we'll talk about that. So yeah, we, we, we got uh we got some stuff uh stuff to to percolate on tomorrow. Twitch.tv backslash wrestling underground. This was twitch.tv backslash real nerdcorp. Be sure to t- tune in to realnerdcorp.com. R-E-A-L-N-E-R-D-C-R-P.com. We're on Twitter at N-E-R-D-C-R-P. We are in on Instagram at Real Nerdcorp. Marcus can be found on his Twitter at Paradox Get P-A-R-A-D-O-X Caddy. That's me. You can also find him on his other, on his other podcast, The True Penny Show. Over on Twitter at T R U E P E N N Y S H O W. You can also find me on Twitter at Chad Nerdcorp, C H A D N E R D C R P, and on Instagram at Chad's Photo Hut. Uh, I think that's everything. So, yeah, we'll be back yeah. tomorrow at 10, uh, Thursday at 10. At least I think we'll be, do, be on Thursday at 10. I have an MMA thing to cover. We may need to go a little bit later on Thursday if you're up for it. Yeah, that's fine. Okie dokie. I think it's on Thursday. I could be wrong. I'll have to double check. I know I'm covering something Thursday. I just don't know what yet. So for Marcus Green, I'm Chad Portal. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for checking us out. Thanks for giving us a chance to get some more podcasts coming to you this week. Check out the website, realnerdcorp.com, Twitter, N-E-R-D-C-O-R-P. We'll see you guys on the next show. And until then, do something. I don't have a catchphrase for the end of the show. Marcus, take us home. Good night, me.